I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody, so here we have one of the uh, power supplies out of the uh, Dell Autoplex 390 systems. Um, these are a chickeny power 265 watt unit. Um, you can see Dell Incorporated, uh, manufactured chickeny power technology company limited, made in China of course. As you look at the spec label, you can see that this unit um, can put out the vast majority of its power just on the 12 volt side of things and if you look at the back of the unit there's no 120 slash 240 switch indicating this is a full range unit according to the label it can take 100 to 240 volts but unfortunately these units have um, do seem to have a flaw in them it's nothing that does any damage to the computer it's just these things, um, what they'll do is you'll get 5 volt standby but the unit will not switch on at all um, either by bridging the green and black wires on the main connector or by pressing this button which I'm not sure if that is a manual test button one thing I can, one thing I can say is this little LED does not light up at all um, and I'd have to look at one of the ones that works to see how it behaves but even when it's in 5 volt standby, the LED does not light up. Um, now I got some Best Tech units and some Hypro units that have a similar LED in the back. And that LED will turn on to indicate that there's, all, there's um, 5 volt standby available. And when you go to switch on the unit, it briefly goes out and comes back on. And when the unit's running and that LED is lit, um, it's telling you that there's power good. A power good signal. So, um, I did notice that these things do have, uh, do tend to have failed capacitors. So, I just tried fixing one of these. I uh, replaced, I replaced a bunch of secondary caps, and unfortunately that did no good. Um, not sure if it's this unit or the other one that I actually had just worked on. Yeah, it's this one right here. So, um... I'm not going to open this one up right now, but I will open this one up to show you inside. I was hoping that maybe <clears throat> replacing the fail caps would get it back up and running. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. In this case, it didn't. Um, same issue as before, just, just getting 5 volt standby on the uh, 5 volt standby lead on the uh, main connector, but no LED status. Seems that there's something deeper going wrong with these units that's really not worth my time trying to fix. So ultimately, ultimately it's looking like um, what I'll end up doing is probably just scrapping the units. So, um, this one looks like all the caps seem okay so that would tell me that it's probably not a capacitor issue um, yes the caps do sometimes go bad in these but it seems like there's something else going on that's causing the unit to not turn on um, and that would require some deep level component level troubleshooting which um, for what it's worth this is not really worth my time um, but I figured at least would let you get a look inside the unit. So this is an active PFC unit. You look over here, you'll see the, the typical circuitry. You'll see an active power factor correction power supply. Our mains comes in here. It um, attaches to the main PCB down here. We've got our input fuse. We've got some EMI filtering, some coils, X capacitors. MOV there, some Y class uh, capacitors here, another X cap, 
Got our bridge rectifier here. Um, we got another X cap back here. Got this big coil in our primary capacitor here. 150 microfarad at 420 volts. So yeah, the active PFC units usually just have just one main cap in them. So it's a pretty tiny, pretty tiny capacitor. But again, then again, this is what a, what 265 watt unit. Um, we got our uh, primary switching over here. I'm not sure exactly what topology this unit is off the top of my head. The other side here is, of course, the primary um, or the, the main transformer. And we got an auxiliary transformer beside it. Um, I'm not sure if this unit um, generates 12 volts and does DC to DC conversion from 12 volts to your 5 and 3.3. Um, I'd have to really dig in to look at that and see, but I mean, you look at the label on this, it says um, 12 volt A and 12 volt B shall not exceed 240 watts. I mean, this thing puts out a big bulk of its power on 12 volts, which makes me wonder if it just uses DC to DC conversion to generate the plus 5 and the uh, plus 3.3 volt rails. Uh, <clears throat> Not sure if this is actually an 80 plus unit. Um, it does not have the 80 plus label, so it may not be. So these units, um, <clears throat> I want to say they're from 2012, 2013. Uh, the the uh, computers themselves, I think, are from 2012, early 2012. So we're going to say maybe 2011 and 2012, that era. Um, now I got another chicken power unit that's actually running my overhead lights and stuff and it was a real cheap piece of crap out of an HP system and I think I remember the label saying standard efficiency and it was not an APFC unit just your standard uh, I'm looking at it right now it's got a uh, 12240 volt switch on the back of it <laughs> so um, but yeah um, <clears throat> such a shame it is kind of a cheap end unit but um, it is kind of a shame that there's something going on with these that's that's preventing them from powering on. I mean, you get five volt standby, and that's it. And again, as I mentioned, I just recapped another. I just recapped one of these uh, with mostly fresh, brand new Rubicon capacitors, and the thing still doesn't want to power up. So, yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to uh, scrap it. I'm going to pull the uh, new caps back out of it, and I'll just probably not scrap any things, <clears throat> taking the wires out and. Pulling a PCB and maybe <clears throat> maybe salvaging some parts like maybe the primary bridge and some like things like that. But uh yeah. Kind of a shame, but you know, considering there are several of these units that have gone bad, um it seems like there's something going on with them. Um now if it was a really if it turned out to be a real simple fix, that'd be great, but um I'd have to do some serious um, component level troubleshooting, which I just simply don't have time to do. Just try to get you another look here at this unit. There's a look at the secondary side. Here's your primary side over here with the active PFC. <clears throat> Here's where your mains comes in. Yeah, um, <clears throat> what I may do actually is I'll put the cover back on this one and put these up for just a little bit and <clears throat> upload this to YouTube. If any of you guys have ever worked on one of these particular units and you know what's wrong with them um, what causes them to not uh, turn on feel free to leave me a comment uh, let me know what's going on if it's something simple like if this is changing out a simple component that'd be great but uh yeah uh, other than otherwise it's gonna be um, I'll probably scrap these things because I just don't see the real just don't see the point in trying to fix them when it's, uh, when it's other than let's say a uh, a recap. I mean, I, re I recap power supplies. I I've recapped the 
pretty good number of them. <clears throat> and when it's and a lot of times capacitors generally cause pro or want, are the cause of problems with these things. But it does seem like there's something else going on. Um, and I've ruled I've ruled out a recap as a fix because uh, on the other unit, like I mentioned, put new caps in it and still doesn't want to power up. So anyways, let's look inside that uh, unit, and it, again, it's a uh, Dell slash Chickeny Power model H265AM. Gives you just your basic number of connections. You've got a four-pin CPU power connection, which the CPU has its own 12-volt rail. You've got a total of four SATA power connections and a 24-pin ATX connection, and that's it. That's all you get with this thing. So again, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well, everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to your channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support and thanks for watching this video.